is Pillsbury versus Mason. Hastings, 1895. Uh, ever since that first round loss, Pillsbury has just been rolling his opponents, winning game after game after game. Um, now it's round 10, and I believe Pillsbury has seven wins. Uh, maybe eight wins, a loss, and a draw, if I'm not mistaken. An incredibly impressive score. So, my question for you guys What's a typical idea here for white? What would you think about doing? Pause your video. Think about your move. So, okay, this is a typical idea, like, from a queen's gambit position. This pawn on c6 is weak. However, it has enough defenders now. Bishop, the rook, the queen. There's no real way that white can attack it enough times. However, white played a very typical move. Bishop to a6. This is, we're going to get rid of one of these defenders. And after bishop takes, queen takes, our plan is to go knight e5, and all of a sudden, our knight's going to attack it, and our two rooks, and he doesn't have a bishop defending it anymore. Also, we're threatening the a7 pawn. In the game, black played rook c7 to defend the a7 pawn. It turns out that by far the best move would have been knight d7. Restric restricting the knight from coming into e5 and sacrificing this pawn. One sample variation goes like this. And white's queen's a bit out of play, the a pawn's weak, and we're threatening to perhaps trap the queen with rook to b8. And this gives uh, black pretty much good counterplay. But in the game, he didn't, he didn't find knight to d7, he went rook to c7. And now knight to e5 is a very strong move. Um, do we see why? Black has two ways to deal with the attack on the c6 pawn. The first way is rook to c8. Pause your video, figure out what move you would play against rook to c8. Yeah, there's a few good moves here, but knight c6 is one of them. And if rook takes, we actually go queen takes rook. Queen takes, the only defense queen f8 and white is just up the exchange. So that is a winning position. So rook c8 doesn't work, so he ended up playing c5 instead. Uh, the idea is the pawn can't take it because the queen takes e5. Again, pause your video, figure out what you would do here. And yeah, c5 is not a good move either, because rook takes c5. And this pawn is pinned to the queen, and after rook takes, rook takes, knight to d7, rook c6, knight to b8, rook takes queen, knight a6, and, I mean, knight c6 was played, uh, rook takes b, rook takes d5 would have been alright, but knight c6 is good, because it restricts this knight, and doesn't allow rook c8 either, because of knight e7 check. So it's a good technical move. And after g6, um, he could have taken on d5, he took on, a, on, on a7 instead. The position's hopeless, whites up two pawns, and won the game pretty soon after. We can just see how the game ended, since there's only a few more moves. All right, he's up three pawn, four pawns. This is enough. <laughs> I think we're done, and now he resigned. Okay, so the key to this game was kind of this plan of attacking the c6 weakness. Like you see, it's on an open file. It's a weak pawn. How do you attack it? Well, this bishop on c2 can't really attack it so easily. This bishop is defending it though. That's for sure. Therefore, trading this bishop makes a lot of sense with the idea of knight e5, and now you have to see black's defense, knight to d7. That keeping the knight out of e5 is, on, is very important, and number two, very important, is to play in c5. So it does two things at once. Play in c5, keeps the knight out of e5, and if white takes on a7, which is what he was scared of, uh, we have some decent counterplay after c5, for the reasons I mentioned earlier. So those were the key ideas in this position. Pillsbury understood them much more than his opponent, and therefore he won very easily. And this is what I like about some of the old games. Uh, the quality of play for their opponents was sometimes quite low, and it helps it helps lower-rated players learn these ideas. Like, somebody like Carlson's not going to blunder stuff like this. It's just not going to happen. Nobody in the top 100 of the world is ever going to do that. So sometimes these old games are more instructive than the modern games, because you get to see these ideas and you, also, you get to see them work against people who just don't know how to combat them. 
Thanks guys for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.